Hey, what's up social media? Ben here, coming at you with another review on something in a box. Today's review, we're going to look at one of the Seha Girls, better known in the Western world as the Sega Hard Girls. Much more popular in Japan, they came out with a, with a show and also a series of games about the Sega consoles personified as, you know, girls. And that would explain the name. Today, we're going to look at the Mega Drive, the first release of the statues for the Say Hi Girls. So, this is the box. You know, it's in Japanese, only only released in Japan so far, but, you know, how small the world's getting with the internet, it's also getting smaller with the mail service. So, let's take a look in the box. And also afterwards, let's check out my top 10 favorite Genesis games. Because, you know, I'm from America. I don't have a chance to get too many Mega Drive games. So let's check it out. So, when we first get in the box, we gotta cut the tape as usual. And then, let's see what oh, they have hidden tape. Those and Fs. Those and so this is uh this is gonna be real nice oh yeah oh man wow and i guess i guess all the accessories are in this plastic giant right here more tape more tape oh it was being shipped worldwide from Japan, you know, because everybody in the world wants these. I want them to arrive very, very safely. So, there you go. Sega Mega Drive, you know, with the cute big shoes, kind of like she's, like, you know, wearing, like, some Sonic the Hedgehog shoes. And then you can't tell that's uh that's the a b and c button with the red the red outline so that you know it, it resembles the sega mega drive controller and then wow well, with the beauteous anime hair with you know the 16 bit book because I guess, uh, I guess they think Sega Mega Drive. Wow. The three buttons. The three button hair clip. Wow. Wow, so many good details on this. But I guess they thought Sega Mega Drive fans were like, nerds. Because they made her the nerdiest, and that's cool. Nerds are totally in right now. And as you could see, they give her a real nice, real, real nice Sega Genesis to stand on. JK, it's a Sega Mega Drive. I already know. And hollow on the bottom don't need too many details on the bottom because it's just the stand you know 16 bit because that was how they were trying to get ahead of nintendo with the bit wars if you didn't know it used to be who can make the most bits you know sega was like well i got some bits and then they came out with the super nintendo and that was like a pretty invalid argument but still 
very good looking stand very good looking it's uh, thinner than a normal one but it's just a stand it looks like it looks like you know her heel goes in right here and She's standing. She's standing. We'll hide those Super Nintendo games. Because this is a Genesis video. Well, Mega Drive video. You know. Wow. She is just adorable. Like, I cannot get over that. They gave her the, the red outlined black main color, color scheme of the Mega Drive. As you could tell, with the red outline and the gold 16-bit writing, wow, this thing is just awesome. You know, the nerdiest of them with her glasses. Wow, very cool, very cool, very cool. So, yeah, so why not get into my game recommendations, you know, you know, first up, number 10, we got Devilish, a very good breakout adventure game, and what I mean by a breakout adventure game is it's breakout with like enemies on the screen you know a few bricks here and there but you use the paddles it's two players so they can have a back paddle that saves the ball and a front paddle they can rotate and hit the ball sorts of which ways transversing through a little world and then you you know you get to the end of the level and there's a boss and there's a time limit that's where the challenge is but this is a very fun pick up and play game to just, you know, have fun with a friend with. Very good. Very good. I played this with a lot of people who don't play video games. And they've had a blast. Because, you know, it's a teamwork game. And it switches to who's the saving ball paddle. So you could just pass controllers to whoever's better to be the front player. And, you know, people all have a good time seeing the crazy bosses. Very clever. And uh, they have a nice little story about how you're like a, a princess and a, I don't know, a boy. Maybe a prince or a knight or something. And evil witch turn you into paddles. It's got a nice little opening. Nice little opening, too. And, you know, I don't know. I don't know why exactly it's called devilish because there aren't really any any devil devils but I would highly recommend it uh my number nine I grab I grab the first echo the dolphin but really the first and second echo the dolphin are both tied for number nine I consider them one whole game this is where you're a dolphin with psychic powers and you know you can all communicate through echolocation and what happens is what is it the whirl or something well we'll just call it a mysterious storm I don't want to ruin it too much but you know the mysterious storm steals your dolphin clan and then you gotta go and save them. And it's very mystical. Like you travel through time, going to going to the past, and then you go to the future where there are like flying dolphins. Very, very interesting story. I would say I would say the most interesting story on the entire system, as far as like RPGs or otherwise, by far the coolest story. Especially once you get to Echo the Dolphin in the Tides of Time. 
but boy I warn you this is a bear to get used to as far as controls but once you get used to the controls it's very 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 rewarding and the story just keeps getting better and better the graphics are amazing and I have this weird like fear of open water so it keeps me on edge it keeps me going it keeps me going And then, my number eight, I'm a sucker for normal arcade games turned into adventure games. So, Dragon's Revenge, it's very, very similar to the games on the Turbo Graphics, like Alien Crush, Devil's Crush, all those ones. I'll get to show you eventually, but... It's an adventure pinball game by Tengen. Very cool. I love me some pinball with some meaning. I mean, I can enjoy playing an arcade pinball machine once or twice, but I get bored unless they have evolving maps. And if you could tell, there's like, you know, you know, the dark, dark queen lady, you know, the dragons, you know got to defeat that's a boss world you know very awesome they make very huge maps so you like fall through a table and, and then you can't really make a true pinball machine in real life like these games so if you haven't played a pinball adventure game i would highly recommend dragon's revenge it's one of the cheaper ones like alien crush and devil's crush are on a system that's astronomically expensive and they're expensive themselves so this is a good a good starter for those and I really enjoy it one of the few on the Genesis and then we're gonna go back to maybe a a game that I have a little a, a tad of a nostalgia blinders for but boy I spent I spent at least hundreds of hours on this game when I was little. It's a very simple game. Good versus game. Rampart. What you do is you have your you and your opponent. You get your first little time limit. And you get Tetris piece shaped walls for your castle. And you build a little outline for your castles. And then... After that time limit's done, you put a lot of cannons inside of the castle. And then there's another round, a round three, where you're firing, well, a phase three of each round, because it's multiple rounds. I think it's like three or four. But you, you fire your cannons at each other's castles, and if you break the walls, they can't build any more cannons in that area until they repair it. And you get some messed up shaped walls. Like, I'm talking messed up shaped walls. So, it's a very good fast pace. Maybe like 5 to 10 minutes a game. At the end, it was my first time seeing like an animated person get all beheaded in junk. Very good. Very good fast pace. Another good one for those who don't, who have friends that don't really play games, but you want to play a game with them. They'd be down. It's kind of like Tetris versus mode kind of stuff, but a unique experience. Very fun. Very cool. Close to my heart there. So, for my number six game on the list, I'm going to have to go with Light Crusader. Uh, I really like Treasure as a company. And they made, they made famous ones like Gunstar Heroes, you know. They also made, like, Guardian Heroes, you know, McDonald's, Treasure Island. They made all those classics, but this one, I didn't even know about until I bought just the cartridge and popped it in. And I was like, whoa, this is an isometric adventure platformer. It's kind of like Zelda, but on a, hor but on a diagonal. But this has some crazy good sprite work. And like, it's so unknown. I got this brand new for five bucks. Like, how can you not know about a treasure game? 
So that's just proof like people really you don't have to buy the expensive ones to have a good time. Very good. It's like a dungeon crawler, you know. And then the next one we got, I'm going to do another Echo the Dolphin kind of thing. I'm going to group both the Mutant League games into one. They have just, I love old sports games, the arcade experience, very good. They, they are packed with funny, fast-paced, competitive moments. Uh, Mutant League Hockey is also very good. That's the other one. It's a little harder to find, but Mutant League Football is also good. Um, yeah, you're, you're, you know, just like Monsters and Junk as a team. And you fight each other while playing these sports. It's kind of like, I would recommend like NHL 95 just as much because of the price. But if you could get your hands on it, these Mutant League games are insane. And like, if you're big on box goodies, like, they got like trading cards, you know, like two or three come with each game. Like, I don't know, if you're, if you're like a big... A big time like goodies in a box kind of collector very cool to find complete very funny like the snot and the, <laughs> and the gore and all the jokes very 90s attitude -y. very cool very cool would highly recommend would highly recommend and then You know, my number number four, if you are a big fan of Legend of Zelda and you are tired of looking at Zelda's face, try out Landstalker. Very cool. It's isometric though, but has much better graphics, not a top-down, small sprite sort of thing. And, you know, straight up. Straight up, you get the full Legend of Zelda experience, but with the different elf boy. Well, you know, pointed ear boy, never say Zelda's an elf. But yeah, would highly, highly recommend. And then, another one. You guys probably see some of these next ones coming. Sunset Riders. It's a very fun, sort of, uh, sort of like a side-scrolling beat-em-up, except you shoot at people in the background and it's kind of like side scrolling shooter sort of thing you know not in the background but you know they'll jump out of windows they jump out of all sorts of stuff you got dodge rolls you got all sorts of stuff very well done very well done as you could tell bought this off a dude named marty <laughs> but yeah very good game um, not even a hidden gem or anything, like, talk about, like, super popular because of quality right there. Also, it's on the Super Nintendo. Very good. Both slightly different because of graphic capabilities, but still both very good. Uh, I'm sort of cheating on my number two, but this is an unreleased ROM. I got a reproduction cart, you know, uh... I was kind of sad to find out they were sort of like cannibalizing real carts at the stand I got it at. Because, you know, use a cheap, ugly cart. Like, no one's going to pay more if you destroy an awesome sports game from the 90. But Alien Soldier, biggest sprite I've ever seen in a game. And very good. Like, also, also a treasure game, but unreleased. You're this chicken man thing. And it's like a very fast-paced side-scrolling shooter where you jump, dodge, shoot things. Kind of like Gunstar Heroes, but with an enormous sprite. Just imagine that with all sorts of weapons, too. Very fun. Uh, you can find the ROM online, free, emulate it, do whatever you need. Very cool. Very cool. And then number one, you guys might smack me. But Sonic 2, man... I've been through this game I don't even know how many times. And if someone sucks at games, just make them tails, you know. 
you know. But yeah, so, I mean, can't beat a classic. I hate to say it. And at least this is one of the best-selling games on the system, besides maybe the first one. But this trumps the first one. And then the third one gets pretty convoluted, so I would highly, highly recommend this game. It's like, you just, you can't beat Sonic. Sonic, Sonic for, oh my god, Sonic for, for president, like, please, like, it. they're hiring, like, celebrities, hire Sonic, you know, as president, you know. But yeah, so... Let me know what you guys' favorite games are in the comments. So, thanks for tuning in, guys. That was my review on the Say Hi Girl, known as Mega Drive. And also, I hope you enjoy some of my recommendations. As always, remember to have a great one. Bye.